And then the conservative movement or the free market movement, the Tea Party movement, other groups like Americans for Prosperity, we simply left Washington, D.C., got out of the Capitol, and took our message to the American people. And against all the odds, against all the political prognosticators, as we stand here today on April 24, 2010, cap and trade is dead in the United States Congress. It's not going to pass. The left and the environmental agenda is not going to get their most cherished dream because a movement has arisen that is animated by ideas, not personal destruction or attacks, but by ideas. We take those ideas to the people and we're winning in the arena, despite the other side having every advantage of money, every advantage of power in Washington. Ideas matter. Grassroots energy and activism, what you're doing with this party, it matters. It has the power to turn a country around. That was the second agenda. The third agenda item for them was having government take over health care. Now, in America, that's a very personal, difficult issue for people. That was supposed to be a slam dunk, to use a basketball term, uh, for the other side. It was supposed to be an easy victory for them, something that would buttress their claim to be transforming America. It took them over a year to pass the most basic health care takeover legislation because we simply took a very core message to the American people, and it was twofold on health care. First, we said, when it comes down to crucial moments in your life, my wife and I have four children. When it comes down to a sickness for one of those four precious children, who should make the decisions on their treatment? Should it be my wife and I in consultation with our doctors, private doctors, mind you, not government doctors? Or should the government make that decision? Who should make that decision? Because that's what we're really talking about right now in America. And we took that simple message to the American people. And we had a second message. Do you really think that government thus far is doing a good job? Does it make your life better? Does it really? Are they running the post office that well? I mean, really. If you put Federal Express or your UPS or one of the global private shipping companies up against the post office, it's over in two or three days. And they know it. And Americans looked at that and they said, no, I don't think the government's doing that good a job. And then you ask a simple third question. Do you really trust Washington, D.C. to run a brand new trillion, because it's a trillion dollars, trillion dollar program? And when President Obama says, don't worry, don't worry, this thing's not going to raise the budget deficit one bit. We can do it and actually save money because the government saves money. People died rolling over laughing. No one believes that. The government's saving money? Are you kidding? <laughs> the first poll, the first public opinion poll that was taken on health care, that battle, in March of last year was a CNN poll, cable news network poll. When you ask the question, do you support the health care reform coming out of Washington, 71% of Americans said, yeah, that's a good idea. Sure, we support that. Fast forward to a year later. Today, 39% of Americans now support this health care takeover. 39. You think a movement of energy and grassroots passion doesn't make a difference? It does. It absolutely does. And so, yes, we're making a difference in this country. You want to know when you're winning? You're winning when the other side tries to change the name of their movement. <laughs> have you heard this? Liberals, have, that's been the term for the left in America. It's, it's, a, it's a bit of a, a twist. We know classical liberalism is us, right? We, we know that. But in a twist of American politics over the last hundred years, uh, the left became known as liberals. They thought that was a good term. They took it, seized it. And for the last, literally my lifetime, and well beyond, 60, 70 years now, their term has been for the liberals. Proudly so. I'm a proud liberal is what they would say. Not anymore. They're changing their names, and you'll be flattered by this, by the way. They're changing their names or trying to to progressives. Did you know that? The president's no longer a liberal. He's a progressive. And the left, are, they're no longer liberals. They're progressive. I, I think that's happening here, right? The, the socialists 
are now the social democrats in most times. Is that correct? You know you're winning when your opponents literally are in such difficult, dire straits on the ideas that they're presenting that they're so discredited that you, they have to change their name. And that's happening right now in America. Many people have asked me what motivates or animates the, the, the Tea Party movement. And I just wanted to share with you briefly uh, really four uh, characteristics that animate the Tea Party movement. And I would be curious to know, and I mean this in a genuine sense, uh, do these ideas uh, resonate or are they, are they something that, 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 that you here in the Progress Party would find animating as well? First and foremost, and, and Siv, you mentioned this earlier, first and foremost, uh, we're animated by the idea that government has gotten too big, too powerful, too grasping, too expensive, too arrogant, too out of touch with the average citizen. Is that something you guys share as well? Is that, a, is that something that makes sense to you as well? I, I know folks in the Tea Party movement, they take very seriously the words written by Thomas Jefferson when he was writing uh, really so much of the, the early uh, documents for this great, great nation. He wrote that we're concerned with certain, that people have certain inalienable rights endowed by their creator with inalienable rights among them, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And we strongly believe those rights are God-given. They're not given by the government. We don't have to go to the government and petition them for the rights to life, to liberty, to the pursuit of happiness, as long as that pursuit is within the confines of civil discourse and, and the law of the land. It comes from our creator, not from government. And that's something that motivates us and is bringing us back into the fray. You know, my favorite president, uh, and really the political figure who, who inspired me to, to enter uh, the political arena was Ronald Reagan. And I'm glad to hear you believe that as well. And when I was just a, a young man, I, I, I guess I was in high school. Uh, I was still in grade school, basically. And I listened to his very first inaugural speech in January of 1981. And speaking about this, he'd said something that I've always remembered, even to today. He was entering office at a very challenging time, arguably more challenging than the last two years. Interest rates through the roof, inflation runaway, unemployment double digit, facing a very difficult and aggressive Soviet Union then, empire then, communism. And he said, in these times, government is not the solution to our problem. Government is the problem. He was right then, it's right today. The second animating feature of the Tea Party movement is, is how we view government. And, and let me say it this way. The left views government as a piggy bank, as a Christmas tree. You know, you wake up on Christmas morning, you kind of rub your hands together and you run downstairs and you go, Wow, look at all these presents. What will I open first? I have this, I have this. Government views, or the left views government, uh, and they think it's Christmas morning. They want more. They always want more. I want more spending. We want more power. They don't actually say power. They, they, they the ability to help people is what they say. We want more, more regulation. We want more. It's almost like they stamp their feet, and like my 12-year-old sometimes, he goes, I want more. And that's why they're involved in political, the political process very often. They want more from government. When I go to our rallies, and I've been to hundreds of them over the last year, and I mean that in a literal sense, hundreds of them in all. Uh, I've been to all 49 of 50 states. I have not gotten to Hawaii, which breaks my heart. I don't know how I've missed Hawaii, but I've not gotten there yet. But I ask our activists, what is it that you want from government? What is it you want? The number one answer, and this, was, this wins hand down, hands down. The number one thing we want from government is to be left alone. Just leave us alone, right? Leave us alone to enjoy our freedoms. And I imagine that's what you want as well from the response. But here is the great irony of democracy. 